Maybe you don't like the Apple Watch. Maybe you want to wear other watches that aren't freaking fitness trackers. Or maybe you just don't want to spend the money on that Apple Watch Ultra HD 4K with cinematic mode. That doesn't really make sense. Also, I get it. Tracking your food can be tedious and very annoying. So that's why if you're starting a fitness journey of any kind, I'm going to share with you what I would do if I didn't have an Apple Watch and didn't track any of my food. So let's first start by taking off my Apple Watch here. And uh, I don't think anyone's ever seen what my left wrist looks like. Are you ready? I feel like I should have this on OnlyFans or something. I do feel kind of naked. Actually, no, I'm, I'm gonna put it back on because this feels weird. Come on, dude, who are we kidding? I'm sorry I left you for a little bit, buddy. Create cool things. Welcome back to the YouTube channel, friends. It's great to see you here. If you didn't know, my name is Brian. And if you do have a quick moment, that would be fantastic if you crushed that freaking like button and left something in the comments below. Also, have you subscribed to the channel yet? Because now is the time. You just make sense at this point. My videos are on your algorithm. You're watching them. Maybe you even bought an Apple Watch because of them, or maybe not. Maybe this is your first time here. Freaking subscribe to the channel. Support me. So as most of you know, I use the Apple Watch to get an idea of how many calories I burn every single day. And then I track my food using my fitness pal to get an idea of how many calories I eat every single day. I've talked about both of these things quite a bit, but if I didn't use either of these things, what on earth would I do? I would just be living like a normal human being, like 99% of the world. Wow. If you're starting a weight loss or fitness journey of any kind, the first and most important thing that you need to figure out is how to create a calorie deficit. This means that your starting point is figuring out these two things. Number one, the calories you burn every single day. Number two, the calories you eat every single day. Once you have an idea of these two things, you can then adjust what you eat and therefore create that wonderful calorie deficit that's going to give you the results you're looking for. Did you like those hand motions? Pretty cool. Also keep in mind you can drink all the tummy detox tea you want. You can add a bunch of very hot and spicy ghost pepper to every single one of your meals. You could sit in a sauna for four hours a day and you still won't lose weight if you're not in a calorie deficit. Now thankfully the method that I'm going to share with you in this video won't ask you to do any of that. So you can relax a little bit. Now before we get into all this I do quickly want to share with you the sponsor of today's video and you might have already guessed but it's Element. And if you didn't know Element is a very tasty electrolyte drink mix. I have one of these just about every single day and each packet is only 10 calories. It won't break your fast and it's got a brilliant science-backed ratio of electrolytes in every packet. A thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, as well as 60 milligrams of magnesium. I know that this is the sponsor of the video but let me tell you this. When I started replenishing my electrolytes every day my mood was immediately improved I had way less brain fog, way more energy. My workouts went like through the freaking roof. It almost overnight changed how good I feel every single day. So I've linked Element in the description. I would definitely recommend you check them out. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash Brian. And Adam C. This deal is only available through my link, so you must go to D R I N K L M N T dot com slash Brian Adam C. Now, just to make sure you're up to speed on all this, let's quickly discuss how a human body burns calories. Now, there's two different ways. The first way is through active calories, and the second way is through resting calories. And we can combine these to get a total daily calorie output. Now, your active calories are broken down into two categories. The first one is your actual exercise calories when you're lifting weights or doing cardio or crushing that Zumba class. And then you also have something called NEAT, also known as non 
exercise activity thermogenesis. And these calories are simply burned when you're bobbing your head to music or moving your hands when you're talking like I am now or even typing on your keyboard when you're at work. All of those little movements actually add to the active calories you're burning. Now on the other side of it, we have those resting calories, which is also known as basal metabolic rate. And it's the bare minimum of calories that your body burns just to stay alive. Okay, Brian, so that all sounds good, but now how do you get an estimate of those total calories that you're burning every single day? I would go to a completely free website called bmrcalculator.org and get an estimate of these totals. So I'm actually gonna walk you through that right now. Let me just quick, um Wow, just like that, there's a MacBook. That's cool. Keep in mind, these are just estimates, but let's go through here and fill it out. Let's start with my age, 35 years old. Male, I weigh about 170, but when you go through these types of things, you always wanna err on the side of caution. So basically, make sure you're underestimating things. So let's put 165, five feet, 11 inches tall. Calculate your BMR. 1708 calories a day is my basal metabolic rate. So that was very easy to figure out what my resting calories are. Now, if we scroll down here, it can also factor the total calories I burn in a day, depending on my activity level. Now, this is where it gets tricky because we as humans like to overestimate. So you want to be honest here and really consider, well, how much am I actually exercising and make sure you're erring on the side of caution. So if we take a look here, I mean, I'm probably on the very high to even high level of activity, which would mean I could eat between 2,900 and 3,200 calories a day. But if I was just starting out and I was doing this, I would underestimate here a little bit and probably try and find myself around the moderate range, especially also considering that I do take some days off from working out and some of my activity levels on some days are more than others. So I would actually probably feel pretty comfortable at around the 2,500 to 2,600 calories a day mark. That's where I'd start in terms of how many total calories I'm burning every single day. Now let's move on to figuring out what I'm going to eat based on this information. But first, uh, let's get my iPad back here. There we go. What a cool trick. Wow, Brian. <clears throat> Okay, so let's assume that I've never tracked any of my food before. Well, here's what I would immediately start doing. I would get on what I call a protein priority diet. Now keep in mind, this still allows for carbs and fats. This isn't keto, this isn't carnivore, this is making protein a priority and still enjoying plenty of carbs and fats. I would aim to eat 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of my body weight. So I would try and get in around 170 grams of protein every single day. Now something to keep in mind if you're overweight and 25% body fat and above this protein goal might actually be a little bit tricky to hit so even if you can hit half a gram of protein per pound of body weight you'll be fine so for example if you weigh 300 pounds try and hit 150 grams of protein every single day now keep in mind here being that I do have a general idea of how many calories I'm burning using that BMR calculator it wouldn't be the worst idea to do a little bit of math maybe even try and track a couple of days worth of food just just to make sure that you are within the range of calories and you're not just completely over consuming. Now, if you didn't even wanna do that, at the very minimum, I would try and log or track in some way the protein that you're eating just to make sure you are hitting those protein goals. That's up to you, but I would definitely recommend it. So why this diet? Well, number one, protein is incredibly filling. It will keep you fuller longer. It's literally the number one satiating nutrient that you can eat. Also, it's got a thermic effect. So when you eat it, your body actually has to use more energy to digest it, which means you burn more calories, which means you lose weight. And look, I swear to you, if you just change this one part of your diet, you will start to see results. Obviously, it takes consistency and living an active lifestyle helps quite a bit, but this protein aspect is like the foundation to everything else. It freaking works. Now, a few things that I would still do that are very similar to what I'm doing now is intermittent fasting at least five days a week. I would do 16 hour fast maybe even up to 18 hour fasts. And this will just make eating in a calorie deficit a whole lot easier. Also, as I've said, I'll still eat all the carbs and fats that I enjoy, but I will be very, very mindful about those easy to drink or eat calories. So things like juices or alcohol or freaking soda. Also things like tortilla chips or ranch dressing, as well as fried foods or cookies and donuts or a lot of added oil into the foods that you're cooking. I'm going through all of these things and you probably 
probably already know like, okay, those are some of the fun foods and drinks, but I can't just have this be the majority of my diet and expect to lose weight. So I would just be very mindful of these things and eat them with a lot more caution than something like fruits and vegetables, which I would still make sure to eat every single day. So I've got an idea of how many calories I'm burning every single day. I'm also hitting my protein goals every single day as well as enjoying lots of yummy foods. But the goal is still to lose weight over a long period of time. So now what do I do? Well, you're gonna wanna for sure get a scale and start weighing yourself regularly. So I would recommend at the same time every single day, at least three or four times a week, weigh yourself and log how much you weigh. Now week after week, as you're sticking to this program, ideally you should be seeing your weight drop by about half a pound to a pound per week. If it is, then you're doing the right thing, so keep consistent with that. Now, if you're losing more than half a pound to a pound a week, especially past week two, you're probably not eating enough food and you're probably also feeling pretty miserable. So increase the food a little bit and make sure you're not losing much more than half a pound to a pound per week. Now, if you're not losing weight or maybe you're even gaining weight, obviously you're gonna wanna decrease that food a little bit. Maybe you can switch to air frying some of the foods that you're cooking instead of cooking them in oil or cutting out some of that booze, cutting out some of those carbs and fats that you may not need. But do not cut out the protein. Dang, how many times am I going to say protein in this video? Also, if you're not losing weight, make time for an extra cardio session here and there. Get on the elliptical, go for a walk, find some cardio you enjoy and add that into your weekly schedule and make sure you are seeing that scale drop. Now, one thing to keep in mind here as you lose weight week after week, once you hit that next maybe like five pound milestone, you might want to go back into the BMR calculator and recalculate some of these numbers and maybe even adjust down some of the foods you're eating, tighten up some of those carbs and fats a little bit so you can continue to see that weight drop and ultimately hit your goal weight. One thing that you'll notice here is, yeah, I'm not using an Apple Watch and I'm not tracking any of the food, but what is still required is intentionality, consistency, and patience. I've been doing this for over two years now and I'm still very, very intentional with what I eat and how active I am because I love it and it makes me feel good every single day. If you've seen a lot of my videos, you definitely know my personality loves to dive into all of these little details and be super accurate, which is why I love using the Apple Watch and track my food. But I fully understand your personality is probably not like that, or you just don't have time. But I would still love for you to see the results that you want and feel freaking amazing. So I hope you got something out of this one. Please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. If you don't know by now, all of the music that you hear in every single one of my videos is from Mood Sound Design. It's the music licensing company I started. We are also linked below. Check us out if you need good music for your videos. I really do appreciate the constant support on this channel. We're just slowly growing and it's like a community of people that have, um, we've all really started to figure some stuff out here, huh? Man, it feels great. Well, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you on the next video. Peace. Now let's uh, let's get rid of this iPad here. Ready? Look at that. Now it's just me in this desk. Fantastic. What I would do if I didn't use my Apple Watch or track any of my food. So let's go ahead and start with taking this thing off right here. <laughs> I'm not taking this off. <clears throat> Whoa. Whoa. Maybe I should try and be a little bit more of a normal person. My wife would enjoy that. Yo, yo, yo. <clears throat> you ready? <clears throat> Make sure the iPad is properly positioned. These are all my notes here. <clears throat>